And of course, we're talking about it with categorical data. Now, when I ask you a question, is there an association? So an association basically means there's a link um, that one variable information changes slash ha connects to the other data values. So if I say there's an association, for example, between um, there's an association between your um, presence on Zoom class and your grade. Keep it there. Presence in class, attendance, and grades. Oftentimes, we'll say that there's an association. And so that means that if I have, if I know your attendance, it is likely. Now, association does not mean causation okay I want to point that out there first off so it doesn't cause it so by being in class and we'll learn a lot about this being in class and your grades there's a unassociate there's an association it doesn't mean there's causation being in class doesn't make your grade get higher however there's typically students who come to class have a higher grade and that's not always the case. You have like in stats where we talk about it, there's always those outliers. There's always those one or two instances of people or some people, you know, don't have to come to class and then they do still do well. That's not the, that's not the population looks like. That's not a good picture of the population. So when we talk about association, we means that there's some kind of connection, but not necessarily one makes the other. So while there's an association, there's not a causation. So... But however, if you if you you gave me a student, okay, I don't know anything about their grades, okay, and I and I had and you and you showed me that they are, you showed me their attendance, then more than likely I would probably guess or believe that that student had a higher grade. Typically, that student would have a higher grade than a different student who doesn't. Now, it does not mean that it's true. It does not mean that one student who has higher attendance has higher grades. People who don't understand statistics will make bad um, decisions. They think it's a it's a fact. They think that it's a causing. Oh, that student has great attendance, that student has higher grades. This student has bad attendance, that student has bad grades. No. However, it's more likely there's a connection. Generally, students with a higher attendance have a higher grade. If I had to bet money without knowing anything about this student at all, besides their attendance, then my money would go to the student who had good attendance. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to turn out the way it turned out. And there are some people go, ha, 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 look at the data afterwards. It turns out that that student who comes into school every day has terrible grades, and the other student is going to Harvard. You made this. No, that's not the point. The point is that general information in regards to decision making, and this is also one of the things that we try to say in terms of students like, hey, if you're going for a job interview, dress nice. If you're going to address your teachers, dress them appropriately. Just because you use incorrect grammar doesn't mean you're a bad student. However, we get judged. People think people have built in associations based on what they've experienced in their lifetimes. People who, who don't dress up to interview aren't prepared, even though they might be. There might be another reason. They don't have clothes. They, they, you know, they really had to do like 10 different things before they came to the interview, and that's why they couldn't. But the person doesn't know that. And if you have the opportunity to, you, you do what you can because of these perceived associations. All right? doesn't make it fact that there's a connection, typically, for the general population. So association links. Now, which will mean for our purposes in here that K 
categorical variables that have an association will have a significant, a, well, sorry, statistically significant distribution distribution. And this is what I was referring to in yesterday. Remember I said, oh, 57% and 50%. Is that the same? Well, some people say yes, that is statistically significant. And that's kind of borderline. And so I can agree with you. If you said, oh, okay, 50%, the largest difference of 50% and 57% isn't that much. So I would say they're, they're not statistically significant. So there is no association. Or somebody else can say, hey, you know what? I think 50% and 57% for the same question for vision, for like glasses. 50% wear glasses for females, 57% for, for males. Um, I think that I, the numbers might have been flipped. But the idea is that, oh, those values I feel are statistically significant. So there is an association. Okay? Um, you just have to make sure you answer that part. Um, no association. Now, also, I want to point out something. We're only taking samples, typically. Or we don't have all the information. So sometimes instead of saying there is no association or there is an association, we say that there is evidence of. Okay? There is evidence of an association, which means that it might turn out not to be true, and we'll learn about this because we're just collecting some data. We might just have collected our data, and it just turns out that by looking at our data, things look one way, but in reality, they're different just because we only have some data. That can happen. It doesn't work all of the time, but it most works the majority of the time. If you keep following the correct decision-making processes over and over and over, the good things happen. No association is the same thing as independence. So when I say independent or independence, it's the same thing as saying no association. Sometimes in your homework, the question will ask you, is there an association? So association or no association. Sometimes in the homework, it'll ask you, is, are they independent? Is there evidence of them being independent? So it's kind of just asking you about the other. It's asking you no association. So if you say yes, you got to be careful because are you saying yes, there's an association? Are yes, there's they're independent. In other words, are you saying yes, there is association, or yes, there's no association? So you got to be clear about that. So just make sure you use the words and use the words from the text. So when there's no associations, when two variables are independent, the distributions will <coughs> look most um, mostly the same. There are no statistically significant differences. Now this one's trickier because you must, you have to do it for each one. So in the other one, we said 50 and 57% was not statistically significant. Okay, if you said that, then what about the other question? What about contacts then? Okay, you have to say the percentage in contacts. Those aren't statistically significant. Okay, what about neither? You have to talk about those ones and say, oh, these were what they are. Those aren't statistically significant. So you have to say each of them are not statistically significant for the overall distributions to not be statistically significant. However, if just one of them, one, is statistically significantly different, then we say the whole distribution, the two variables, are statistically significant. It just takes one statistically significant to make you say association. To say no association slash independent, each one of the comparisons must be um, not. So let's look at an example. 
Look at the example. And this is the example from class. Okay. Here was the data that we had found from our class. This is from yesterday's. Okay. Kind of like at that 20 problem 24 where you've already 24 C where you've already made this. The question is is there evidence of an association between gender, between one's gender and vision? Is there evidence of an association between gender and vision? And now here's the thing. More often than not, the answer is association. Yes, there's an association. More often than not, because very rarely do all three graphs look pretty much identical for when we're comparing them. Very rarely do they all look exactly the same across. You're comparing apples to apples. Glasses to glasses, contacts to contacts, neither to neither. You're not going within one same bar. That's the biggest mistake people make. So I need you to know this. If you just say, yes, there's an association, guess what's going to happen? Can anybody guess what's going to happen if you say, yes, there's an association? Yeah, so what's going to happen for me? What, what's what's going to happen on my end? You have to explain that is that is correct. So if you just say yes or yes, there's an association, and that's correct, but that's all you say. What will happen on on your grading? Take a guess. No, no credit. You will not receive any credit. Now, I might be a little bit generous and throw you a few points, but I need you to understand that if you do that on the AP exam, you're going to get no, we call that a, a bald answer. Bald answers can happen like you just, you, you threw a dart and it said no association and that's what you write down. If you can just, if, if you could just guess it, most likely, <laughs> you're not going to get any credit. Um, and so even if the answer is no association, our association and you get that one correctly but you have no reasoning behind it and that's why I said the reasoning is the reason one person can say association and they end up getting full credit based on their explanation another person says no association boom they get full credit because they explain their answer as well you just got to explain so can I get somebody to answer this question and we kind of talked about it yesterday would you say there is an association or there is not and why And I just realized that in this graph, we never really did it all the way. This was neither, neither, contacts, glasses, glasses. All right, can anybody, does anybody want to take a, a, an attempt on this problem and answer? Based on what we said yesterday, is there an association? Can anybody, without the explanation, would anybody want to take a guess of yes or no? Yes, association. No, association. Um, I think yes. Okay. Yes. There is an association. between gender and vision because because why now there's the harder part right now uh, look at all those words I wrote still no credit but basically there's this is what we call a two checkpoints there's two checkpoints there's two criteria one did you State the right one. And two, 
if you did state the right one, did you give a, a correct explanation? Now, there's sometimes we call, did you give a strong explanation or did you give a weak explanation? If you say yes and then you give a weak explanation, like, ugh, you're almost there, but I know what you're trying to get to, that's half credit now. If you say yes and you give a good explanation, that's full credit. If you say no, boom, no credit at all. You're automatically zero if you said no. In this example, this is definitely a, a yes answer. All right, yes, there's an association between gender and vision because, remember, compare apples to apples. In class yesterday, we compared the neither. We said that the neither was kind of like our reasoning behind it because, somebody? You just got to state what they are. State what they are and for who. Well, what do you mean? Like, um, there's an association between gender and vision because male have, like, it's much percentage. Is that what you mean? Yep. Oh, okay. So, like, males have 50% um, neither. Okay. While. Females have, um, is it 30, no, 57%? 36%. <laughs> apples to apples. Neither to neither. Now, you know, basically this would be a full credit answer, but... I kind of almost see this as weak as well. To tell you the truth, I see this as weak as well. And maybe I think on maybe on the AP exam they would say weak. So we need to add one more thing to make it strong, which is statistically significant. There's going to be differences. Thirty is thirty six percent different than fifty percent. Well, yeah, duh, they're different. They're not the same number, right? They're not the same number. But the question really is, are they significantly different? And in statistics, we say, are they statistically significantly different? I think they are. I think that 36% and 50% is, is enough information to say that, you know what, they're, they're, you know, that didn't probably happen by random chance. 36% and 50% seems like there's some type of connection. Now, if the, if the numbers were like, 42, 45% and 50% in that situation, I'd probably say no. But then when it's no, I have to say no for all of them. All right. Here, basically what I want you, now, you could have done this. I want, I want to point out that if we go to our previous notes and we did it here, you can, you, you, if the problem doesn't require you, if the problem doesn't say, if the problem doesn't say to, to actually make a graphical representation, Technically, you don't, but my recommendation is you still do, okay, because it actually helps you with your answer. Ooh, this person did a, a segmented bar graph, and they wrote the answer. Boom, full credit, max credit right there. You can still get full credit without doing the graph if it doesn't ask you by looking at this, these two sentences right here for the conditional distributions. When you look at them here, you go, oh, you can literally see the 50% glasses for females. Um, or sorry, the 36% for female being neither and the 50% being neither for males. So you can actually compare directly here, but it's a little bit harder to visually see it, right? So you had to compare 57 to 50. Ah, uh, that's not statistically significant. Okay, seven to zero. Hey, that's, I would say that's statistically significant. I could argue there. I could have argued and instead of saying about neither, I could have talked about contacts and I probably would have gotten credit. Oh, but wait a minute, 36% and 50%, that's a big difference. That's definitely statistically significant. So that's the one that I am going to use in my sentence explanation for saying, yes, there's an association. But if somebody else went and said, yes, association, and they talked about the 7% and 0% for contacts, I'd give them credit. Now, if somebody said no on this problem, but they said, you know, 57% and 50% are not um, statistically significant. 
difference. 7% and 0% is not statistically significantly different. And 36% and 50% are not statistically significant. If you went so far as to state each one and you say that each one is not statistically significant, I'd have a hard time not giving you four credits though because you have demonstrated to me that you are specifically looking for the concept of statistically significant. And you're saying in your eyes, in your vision, <laughs> that they're not different enough to, for you to make that decision of being different. And you know what? While I disagree, I can see your point. You explained yourself eloquently. You made a good argument. You gave me the data and the reasoning behind it. You know what? You understand statistics. I'll give you the full credit. But it's a lot harder to do it in that way, right? If, if it's not the right answer. Now, on the AP exam, like I said, there's usually a lot of rubrics that say, you know what? If they say no, but they, they, they talk about each of them, then give them full credit. That's it's how we grade it. And AP statistics, it's everything is graded on a rubric. So it's open to interpretation from us. I'm an AP reader. I grade the AP statistics exams. This year I had to do it all on computer. Um, and that's it.